morning, Epic Church. Let's give God some praise in this place. He's worthy of our praise.
Father, our trust and our hope is in you this morning. Christ alone. 
Do everything to us.
posture ourselves, Father God. We're posturing ourselves to approach you, Father. We would lay ourselves low, Father God, as we approach that heavenly throne that you're sitting on, Father. That we know that only you, Lord, can take away our sins. Only you, Father, have made the way for us. So we are posturing ourselves for the approach, Father. He sing with you in this moment. If you just close your eyes all over this room. When my heart is overwhelmed, I go to the rock that is higher than I. When my That is higher than I. When my heart is overwhelmed, I go to the rock that is higher than I. When my heart is overwhelmed, I go to the rock. That is higher than I. But how many of you just need to go to the rock this morning? There's something about being able to ascend. Being able to grab a hold of a higher experience and a higher perspective. The Lord said, my thoughts are not your thoughts and my ways are not your ways my thoughts are higher they are deeper they are greater and some of us are overwhelmed in this moment and it's okay for you to be overwhelmed but it's also okay for you to make that transition to something higher to something greater to something deeper to a different perspective to a different way of seeing your circumstance and looking at your situation will you ascend with me this morning and go higher with him come on ask him take me higher let me look at it from a different perspective. Let me ascend in my perspective of my situation in this moment because I'm overwhelmed, God. I'm overwhelmed and I believe that I'm sinking, but I will lift up my eyes onto the hills. Someone's coming my help because I know that my help comes from nowhere other than you. My help comes from the Lord.
Worship him as Lord right now, no matter what you're going through. You are Lord. You are Lord. You are Lord. Come on, some of you are in some valleys and you got to declare. You got to declare that he is Lord. Because the God of the mountains is the God in the valleys. the song says he's a God in the bad times. He is God when I'm up and he is God when I'm down. He is God when I'm full of joy and he is God in my sorrow. He is God of all. Come on, come on, lift up your voices to him. Rejoice in the Lord of your salvation. right now can can you show me with a show of hands come on be bold and courageous and it's okay it's okay to see that you're in a moment but sometimes it's right there where you need to sing there's a paradox of worship and this is why we can't go by what we feel and what we are feeling emotionally because the Bible says, Sing, O barren woman, thou that bids not bear fruit. And some of us, we're like, Sing? I can't sing when I'm barren. I sing when I see the harvest. But it's your worship that's going to unlock your next moment. It's your worship that's going to unlock your victory. So come on. Just lift up your voice and rejoice in the God of your salvation. Rest through your emotions and rejoice in the Lord. He is Lord. He is Lord of all. Sing that with me, Christ. Everybody sing it. some storms in this room because you sense it. But through the storm, declare it. He is Lord. Through the storm. Who is Lord? He is Lord. Through the storm. Through the storm. He is Lord. Lord. 
shout to the Lord this morning. Uh, Hallelujah! We thank you that we don't have to wait for the right season to worship and to praise you, that we can at all times, in all circumstances, lift up our eyes to the hills and declare where our help comes from. Amen and amen. Hug somebody on your way to your seat this morning. Welcome to Epic Church. I'm Pastor Rosemary Bethel, and I greet you all the way from the islands of the Bahamas. Amen and amen. God bless you this morning. If you can turn to the monitors, we will be having our epic news right now. like to receive a text about events or what is happening here at Epic, join the text tree today. Text EPIC to the number 292929. Yep. If you've been through Growth Track and you're wondering what your next step is, the next step is Dream Team. To learn more about Dream Team and how you can get involved, please visit the information desk in the lobby. Are you ready to get connected and learn more about Epic? Well, if so, please join Growth Track. For more information, please visit the Information Center. Are you looking for a generous opportunity to serve? Well, here is your moment. Come be part of the team and let's make it happen here at Epic every Thursday evening. Child care will be provided from 6 to 8. Mark your calendars now for June the 11th to the 13th. We are going to be training up young warriors to shake this planet for Christ. If you would like to learn more about VBS and what we are going to be doing, please visit the information desk in the lobby.
Good morning, Epic Church. Good morning. Um, man, I hope you are excited to be in the house of God today because um, you don't have to be here, but you're here. Uh, you don't have to be alive, but we have breath. Uh, and so we're just thankful this morning. I'm Pastor Ray. This is Pastor Gwen. And we are excited this morning because we get to celebrate um, one of our graduates. Uh, and this is a very uh, special person, I think, to this house in general uh, because there's a lot that happens, some that you see, some that you often don't see, uh, that she really spearheads and leads out on. Uh, and so we're excited this morning to honor Miss LaSabra Patterson. This is one of our most recent college graduates from um, Dr. Miss LaSabra Warner Patterson. She earned her ED, her doctorate of education. She's a mother of um, Tanaya J and the youngest um, daughter of the late Jonathan Warner and La Rosa Warner. She's honored to serve the kingdom of God. Uh, under the shepherding of um, those who we also honor at Big Church's senior pastor Steve and Apostle Shirley Arnold. La Sabra currently serves as an assistant principal with the Polk County School District. She's taught English and reading in all grades 9 through 12 and served as a teacher and coordinator for the Minority Achievement Program for Students, the MAPS program, as well as a student um, and teacher mentor. She holds a teacher certification in the areas of educational leadership, all levels, English grades 6 through 12, and is ESOL endorsed. So she's been working hard. Yes. Then previous to that, she uh, received her Bachelor's of Arts from FSU. For all you Florida State fans, I know I'll put that out there for her. <laughs> uh, in English with a concentration in writing and a Master's of Science degree in educational leadership from Nova Southeastern University. So she's been working hard. And then on March 2nd of this year, she received her dissertation approval for her Doctorate of Education degree in educational leadership from National Lewis University. And uh, there will be a commencement on June 12th at the St. Pete Coliseum. That's right. Give it up for the Sabra. Woo! We're, we're blessed to honor her this morning. And you know, um, every year we honor our graduates, um, high school and college graduates. This year we had the privilege of honoring a, a doctoral graduate. And so um, what, what an awesome privilege. And we just want to bless you this morning. Um, as you go, we have some gifts there for you from the Epic Church family and Pastor Steve and Pastor Shirley. If you just would extend your hands uh, towards Dr. Patterson. That sounds so good. <laughs> I just like saying it. <laughs> Father, we are, what an honor. We are blessed. We thank you uh, for the diligence, the commitment, um, the surrender uh, that has taken place in the life of LaSabra Patterson. God, what a journey you are taking her on. And we believe that the doors are just opening, that the journey ahead is going to be greater than the past, that the things that you have in store, the plans where she will lay her, ha her head, where her hands will touch, where her feet will tread, God will be your presence, your platform, your place, your position. And as she con continues, continues to submit herself to you, that you will keep her you will lift her head above her enemies, and there will always be light. There will always be light for the path ahead. God, we bless her. This body blesses her. May you keep her in perfect peace. In your name, amen. Good morning, Epic. How are you guys doing today? My name is Pastor LaQuinn Bethel from Epic Bahamas, and it is a joy to be home in Lakeland. This is home. Well, I have the privilege of receiving your tithes and offering this morning. And so I just wanted to quickly speak from a passage in 2 Corinthians chapter 8. And here we have Paul 
addressing the Corinthian church. He said, we want to tell you further, brethren, about the grace, the favor, and spiritual blessing of God, which has been evident in the churches of Macedonia, arousing them that is in them the desire to give alms. For in the midst of an ordeal of severe tribulation, their abundance of joy and their depth of poverty together have overflowed in wealth of lavish generosity on their part. For as I can bear witness, they gave according to their ability, yes, and beyond their ability, and they did it voluntarily, begging us more insistently for the favor and the fellowship of contributing in this ministration, for the relief and support of the saints in Jerusalem. Nor was this gift of theirs merely the contribution that we expected, but first they gave themselves to the Lord and to us as his agents by the will of God, entirely disregarding their personal interests. They gave as much as they possibly could, having put themselves at our disposal to be directed by the will of God. Now this is a powerful, powerful scripture. Because in this scripture, I see two things that are happening. I see, I see a joyous giving, and I see a lavish giving. I see generosity in the giving. Yeah. Now, the thing about this is this. The only way they were able to do this, Paul gave the answer. They first gave themselves to the Lord. What does that mean? It speaks of lordship. When we understand that we are no longer our own, what longer was ours is no longer ours anymore. It belongs to the king. But what happens is when we forget that what we don't own anything, we begin to think that now I can choose what I'll give. I gave earlier this morning a, a, a story about my daughter who's seven years old. And she, was, she got money from my father. She got $25 and my daughter loves to give. And she said, Daddy, I'm going to take $10 right now to set aside to give to the Lord. And I, at first I said, hold up now. The tithe is 10%. The math thing sort of worked in there. $10 from $25. And I went to correct her. And the Lord rebuked me. He said, don't you dare teach her to give from the floor of giving. Don't you teach her to limit in her giving. When there is lordship, it's not about what I need to do. It's God, what are you saying to give? Yes. Am I making sense to anybody? Here at Epic, we believe that the tithe and offering are separate. So as you prepare to give, I want you to be led by the Lord. Don't just say, well, here's my 10%. Ask the Lord, what are you requiring of me to give? If you're ready, you can come up and bring your tithes and offering, your tithes right now. Ready now with your offering, you can come up and give your offering. Stretch your hands forward. Father, right now, we just bless this seed right now. We pray your blessing upon the sower today as they have lavishly give, that you would lavishly give to them today, Father. Father, I pray that you bless this food. Uh, 
I guess I'm hungry. Bless the seed of your kingdom that it will produce mighty fruit for your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, my God. And I've got, I, and I've got something serious to do, too, you know. Golly, the primal instincts just kick in, don't they? And just take over your speech and everything. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is good. Um, this morning, I, I just going off script a little bit, um, I really heard the Lord say fight. Um, and so I know what that means to me. And I said, okay, God, I know what that means to me. What does that mean to you? So this time I'm taking a different aspect on the word fight and what the Lord means by doing that. And it, it, we are at a place right now where we just need to begin to fight for what it is that we truly believe in. Fight for uh, our place fight for the enemy and go against the enemy and combat against the enemy. But this time, it is a, it is a unity fight. The strategy is in our unity. And, and so this morning, I want to invite, if you're in the hallways and you can hear me, if, you, if you've got a pen or, or a book or a phone in your hand, please put it down. I, we need corporate unity today. And the picture that I saw from this was is that I saw a compound, a prison compound, and I saw everyone had gotten out of their individual cells. However, there was a main gate to the compound and it was going to take unity everybody getting to this main gate and pushing and pulling on this main gate in order for us to get out and so what I saw in that is that even though we were out of our individual cells we were still able to be tortured, tormented oppressed, sickness and disease, a famine, all of that that, that are at the oppressors that are pushing down those keeping track, the supervisors of the compound were still under all all of their control, all under their attack, under their oppression in every way, because while we had gotten out of our individual cells, we were still within the compound of the imprisonment camp itself. So while we've excelled at individual prayer and individual intercession and individual breakthrough, we have not moved into that place yet to where we have stood up in unity, sharing our faith, linking arms together to where we can corporately break out of the imprisonment camp that the enemy has tried to put the body of Christ in. Does everybody understand me this morning? Okay, and so if you would, if you would stand with me or sit or kneel or come down here or whatever, I, we need to take a minute and share our faith and intercede on behalf of the corporate body of Christ and come together and begin to fight in the atmosphere against the enemy that would still kill and destroy us in every way, form, or fashion. Sickness and disease is setting on us. The enemy is plucking us off one by one and attacking us and getting us out and down and out we can't do it. We're so, we're so bound by anxiety and fear. We're immobilized and paralyzed. And if you would, raise up a shout and a prayer right now and begin to take hold of the atmosphere and let us fight together. Wherever you are in the building, if you're in the bathroom, I need you to right now come into agreement that this fight is a unity fight. The strategy is in the unity. The strength is in the unity. The efficiency is in the unity. We've got to all hands on deck, push on the fence the gate, the main gate of the imprisonment compound and break through this morning. We've got to pray together right now and just declare, Father, right now in the name of Jesus, we pray right now for breakthrough on behalf of the body of Christ. Father, we intercede on behalf of the body of Christ for breakthrough right now. We say the time is now to come together in corporate faith, in Babel unity, Lord, and overcome any attack and any onslaught of the enemy. Father, we come together as one, one voice voice, one sound, one prayer, one army, God, to breach over into the enemy's camp and breach havoc all about them. Father, we declare that we are moving out of oppression. We are moving out of sickness and disease. Our deliverance is at hand because of the unity of our faith right now, Father. We declare it and say that it is so, Lord. We overcome the enemy right now with our unity. We overcome the enemy right now with our singular faith. As we have risen up together, we combat the enemy and declare and wage war. Father, right now at our word, begin to dispatch angels on our behalf and go into the enemy's camp and to still kill and destroy them. 
that their hands would be off the body of Christ right now, that they're so worried about fighting the other angels that they can no longer worry about us anymore. And Father, we would exchange our personal revival for a corporate revival. We would exchange our personal prayer for a corporate prayer. And Father, we would begin to strengthen our unity in the body of Christ. That we would join faith with our neighbor to our left and to our right and the one in front of us and to the one behind, Father. We fight this morning. We fight this morning. We fight. We fight. We fight. We fight against the inhibitions that would say, I don't want to dwell together in unity. They're different from me. They don't believe like me. They don't dress like me. They don't talk like me. And they maybe even said bad things about me, but I'm sacrificing that this morning. I'm fighting against the disunity of my heart and the disunity of my flesh. And I am joining my faith right now. And we declare breakthrough. Breakthrough. We declare confusion into the camp of the enemy right now. We break open the gate this morning. No more imprisonment. No more sickness and disease. No more oppression. No more fear and anxiety and doubt and disbelief. No more unfaithfulness. Wholeheartedly now we join together and we move through and we break through right now. And now, Father, we thank you for the breakthrough. We thank you for the strategy right now, Lord. We give you praise right now with our mouths. We give you praise right now with our hearts right now. Father, we give you praise. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We worship you, God. We worship you, God. We worship you, God. We worship you right now, God. We thank you right now for the breakthrough. We thank you right now that whom the Son has set free is free indeed. Right now, chains are breaking off. Father, right now, gates are opening up. Right now, doors are being opened right now to the members of the body of Christ. Right now, for the corporate unity. The key is unity. And the keys have been given to us now to open the doors that have been set in front of us, Father. Hallelujah. We thank you for the keys of unity. We thank you for it right now, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We are free. We are free. We are free. We are free. The places we are stuck, we now have mobility. Where we were paralyzed, we can now move. Where we were weak, we now have strength. Where we were timid, boldness is now rising up inside of us. Where we were lost and confused, we are now hearing the voice of the Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. Where our minds have been perverted and distorted and deceived, Father, they're being turned around. We're getting our sound mind back as the oppression is being knocked away from us. Hallelujah. 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 To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Thank you. I, re I appreciate that. I thank you for uh, participating in that. The enemy is always moving, and, and there is no doubt how strategic they are and how much in unity they dwell. And I just know that this morning I heard from the Lord that we are to fight, and we are to fight in unity today. And so I believe that those gates were busted wide open today, that walls fell down today, that we could just walk across. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, ma'am.
what I was saying, um, where we had to fight to get out and fight during the time and, and declaring, uh, you know, uh, every, it's declaring the word and fighting. But once, we, and then we would once in a while go up to the gate and push and push, but we couldn't get out. And maybe a couple of them ca came up. But then when we all of a sudden all came together, we didn't have to fight to get the gate. I just saw that gate just, I mean, it, it, they didn't have to touch it. It just went down. Hallelujah. That's what I'm talking about. Hallelujah. I want to read to you um, the last verse of the last chapter of Romans. The last thing that kind of sums up this whole letter here. It's uh, Romans 16 and verse 27. It says, All glory to the only wise God through Jesus Christ forever. Amen. That word there, glory, is the word doxa. And it says, and, and doxa can mean different things based on what it is pertaining to. And so there's an outline there of if it's pertaining to the earth or if it's pertaining to a person. But then it also says pertaining to God. And when it pertaining to God, it says he is only worthy. And then we take the definition from Merriam-Webster's uh, dictionary, something that brings praise or fame to someone or something, something that is a source of great pride. So as I was reading this and as I was thinking about Paul's life and the things that he had done and all the stuff that's in Romans, just, just great stuff in there, that there is a glory that is only worthy of God, that a praise that is in us that is only good enough and great enough and magnificent enough to give back to God. Gifts and talents that God has blessed us with and given us with from when we were before we were even formed in our mother's womb, when we come out, these gifts were made to only bring glory to God. There is a glory inside of those gifts, inside of those talents, inside of the things that have been given to us that are only meant to be for the glory of God. And I think sometimes how we use them <laughs> to our benefit. Uh, it has been said of me sometimes that I can be a smooth talker. Well, I can use that and have used that and sometimes still do use that. For my advantage. So if there's something that I don't want to be a, a participant of, I can kind of use that speech of persuasion, if you will, or smooth talking or silver tongueness, as others have called it, to get myself out of a situation that I don't want to be in or to get myself elected into a position that I'd like to be in. And thinking that I do use that for my benefit. However, it was only meant... To bring glory to God. So I thought about the ways that we could give glory to God. A Christian gives glory to God. Well, first I look at the, the spirituality. Spiritually, we can accept Jesus Christ as our personal Savior. First and foremost, to become a Christian. It says right here in uh, John chapter 14, verse 6. It says, Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So here we have a way to give glory to God. And there is a single path, a single way to do so. He set down a plan of obedience for us. And he said, okay, this is how you do this. And this is how you can bring honor to me. So spiritually, we can bring glory to the only wise God by first accepting Jesus Christ as our personal Savior. Now, we do that by the ABCs of salvation. We admit, we believe, and we confess. We admit that we've sinned against God. We ask the Lord to come into our hearts and cleanse us of those sins. We believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for those sins. And then we confess with our mouth that he is Lord and Savior of our lives. And so then we've accepted Jesus Christ as our personal Savior. And yet there is another way that spiritually we can give all glory and bring a source of pride to the Father. And that is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Now Acts 1.8 kind of 
describes that briefly for us. It says, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. So here we have another method, a step, a level higher, an empowerment by which we can bring glory to the only wise God. Now the best description that I had is when I was youth pastor, um, I would explain this to the kids. This is the best analogy that I could come up with. Getting saved and not being baptized in the Holy Spirit is like getting married and not having intimacy. Does anybody get that? Okay. Because they got it. And they're like, okay, what can I do right now to get baptism right now? Because there's no way I'm not going to get married and not have intimacy. No Quakers in the house this morning. Okay, just checking. Just making sure we're still alive. Are we still alive and breathing? All right, just making sure. Because that's not going to happen. Just like salvation, we need to move into that next level and have that intimacy of God with God and that empowerment from God to move into the place to where we can receive the power that enables us to be a witnesses by whatever form, whether it's signs, wonders, and miracles, whether it's healing, anointing, words of wisdom, words of knowledge, prophetic giftings, or whatever it is, we have that empowerment that is activated inside of us that then moves into those gifts that God has given us so that we can all bring glory all glory to the only wise God spiritually in every way. Next, we have our thoughts psychologically. Isaiah 26, 3 says, You will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. So here when we move into a place to where we're giving all glory to the only wise God with our thoughts, our thoughts begin to move on the Most High God in every way, form, and fashion, and we say, okay, now I have peace. Now, I won't elaborate on peace, and I'll probably never, ever talk about peace again if you were here Wednesday night. And if you weren't here Wednesday night, I do encourage you to watch the video or get notes from that because that was a great uh, lesson of peace. And I don't, I don't think I could ever do anything to compare to that. So no elaboration needed. If you need elaboration, please watch that video. I encourage you to do so. It will change your life. So well, our minds must begin to transform and move and maneuver to where our thoughts are now giving all glory to the Most High God, to the only wise God in every way that we can possibly think and muster up a thought. Now we go to Philippians 4.8. Now as a child, I, I know this well because as a child I had to write it often for when I didn't make such good choices uh, as a young man. And so this, that's why I knew this right off the bat. I was like, oh, I know what we're going with thoughts because I know what to think about. So fi uh, finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on on these things. So in, in the situation here, we have to find whatsoever thing is pure, lovely. So if there's anything of virtue, if there's anything that could be praiseworthy, we must think on these things to transform our mind, to position ourselves with every thought that could possibly enter into our brains to give all glory to the only wise God. All glory to the only wise God. So we have to begin to think on these things so that we can give all glory to the only wise God. Because that is why we're here. If I, get, if I lead someone in the sinner's prayer and they get saved, that's all glory to the only wise God. If I pray for someone and the anointing of God flows through me and it heals them or delivers them or, or whatever happens to them that moves them in the place to where they turn their eyes to God, all glory to the only wise God. So everything that I should do while I am here brings all glory to the only wise God. Now, uh, Frank Outlaw, the late president of Bilo Stores, anybody remember Bilo? Bilo, where you go shopping? Golly, am I dating myself? Anybody not recall that? Jeez, man. Am I that old? I thought I'm still on that young side of old, but I guess not. I'm starting to transition over, I guess. <laughs> 
But uh, he published an article in the uh, local newspaper in Texas uh, of what he uses to help his employees understand how a little seed can grow into a great tree of destiny for their lives. And it says here, watch your thoughts, they become words. Watch your words, they become actions. Watch your actions, they become habits. Watch your habits, they become character. Watch your character, for it becomes your destiny. So here we move into a place to where our thoughts can carry out great destiny in our lives if we are not ensuring that our thoughts are not bringing all glory to the only wise God. Thoughts is most important in our lives. We have to move into a place to where our thoughts are saying all glory to the only wise God. All glory to the only wise God. And lastly, physically, we must say all glory to the only wise God. In our actions, I think about our actions and what we do. And uh, St. Francis of Assisi is, I, I, that's the funniest name ever. I, I just can't help think about when I first heard that in class and they said Assisi and I was like, do what? <laughs> I was like, I would have legally changed that or something, but I, I guess it, nobody said sissy back then or whatever, but I'd have, I'd have called myself something different or not sissy, you know. How's the sissy doing today? But he's, with great controversy, he's coined for saying, preach the word and if necessary, use words. And so you think about that in everything that we do and every action that we do, we must give all glory to the only wise God. Are we kind of getting a picture here that everything that we say, do, think, feel should bring all honor and glory to the only wise God? Are we seeing a running theme here that the reason that we're on this planet, the reason we exist at all is to give all glory to the only wise God? And so we move into a place of action and actions are interpreted by everyone else because we judge ourselves by our intentions. And sometimes and a lot of times, our intentions do not get translated very well to our outward actions. So there are people with the best of intentions, but they can't help but just offend everybody around them with their actions. So actions move into a place to where it's completely judged by those around us, by what they see us do. And so we've got to move into a place to discipline our actions so much so that it is bringing all glory to the only wise God. Can people stand in a court of law and testify on your behalf that your actions bring all glory to the only wise God. If so, please continue. If not, let's change. Maybe ask somebody, what can I do different? What, in what way do you see me not giving all glory to the only wise God? We must begin to physically, in action, in deed, give all glory to the only wise God. By being present in the moment and listening to the prompting of the Holy Spirit. And whatsoever our hands find to do, doing it with our might as unto the Lord. Not for them. I'm not doing it for them. I'm doing it for all glory unto the only wise God. James 2, 26 says, for as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. Now, a lot of us begin, a uh, lot of people, a lot of Christians kind of debate about that, talking about, well, it's not about works and all of that kind of stuff. Okay, you're right. We are saved by faith. But faith begins to start a little fire inside of us. And Jeremiah said it best. He said, there's a fire that is shut up in my bones. And what he's saying there is that there is a fire that is inside of me that's growing so strong that it's causing me immeasurable pain and torment, torturing me in every way, form, and fashion. I've got to get the fire that has been started by faith and get it out of me and move into the works because you can't have faith without works because you're going to get set on fire inside of you and you can't be still when you're on fire. And if you want some help, if you don't have a fire kit like I do, like because I'm a pyromaniac and I've had the fire department call to me a couple of times in my life. 
I will be vulnerable with you right now. And one of them was at a youth party. So <laughs> how do how, how you like to explain that to parents? Well, we kind of had the fire department called on us last night. I'd rather you hear it from me than from the kids. It's like, oh, really? What did you do? Well, we started a fire. <laughs> And it just got really big and scared the neighbors, and they called it on us. So I, everything was okay, and nothing caught on fire, just nervous neighbors. <laughs> but if you don't have one of those, you can go into your kitchen, put your hand on the eye, and turn it to low. You don't even have to turn it to high. Just turn it to low and hold your hand there and not say anything. Try not to move. Just sit there and, you just, and just see little singes going up. You're just holding it and then just, ah! You've got to do something because you're on fire. It's hurting. It's burning. I've got to get away. You're running around the house. I'm on fire. I'm on fire. I'm on fire. I don't know what to do. That's what it is in faith inside of us. It provokes us into works. That fire is only going to be able to be contained for so long. And you can see it, the ones that have the fire inside of them, because they look grumpy. They look like Oscar the Grouch. You ever see them? It's that constipated look like... fire inside of them and they don't want to show it in their works. They don't want to let the faith come on into the outside into the actions and they're just sitting there and they're just miserable and they make everybody else miserable. They're the Eeyore of the group, you know. And all you need to do is just ah! scream just a little bit and get a little bit of the faith that's inside of you outside and express it into this world so that you can give all glory to the only wise God with your actions. Can we let a little bit of our fire out before we get totally consumed? Glory to God. Woo! I'll tell you, you know, because you pick those grumpy people out, you're like, yeah, I know who you're talking about right there. They are so mean and just all the time, they just need to let a little bit of their fire out. <laughs> so next we move to our words. <laughs> Proverbs 18, 21, it says, Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruit. So if you have decided that you are unable to preach the gospel by action only, and you have decided that you're going to have to go ahead and say something and use your mouth, please choose wisely. The greatest responsibility here now is life and death is in your tongue. Life and death, not middle ground, not anything else. It is life or it is death. When you open up your mouth, you are speaking life or you are speaking death. There is great now responsibility on your behalf to make sure that when you are opening your mouth, you are repeating what you heard the Father say. Because as you repeat what the Father says, you will speak life to those things that need life and death to the enemy and his plans. Thank you, Lord. All to bring glory to the only wise God. If we're going to open up our mouths, we must know that every single thing that is in our mouths that comes out because we've decided that we just can't hold it any longer has an assignment attached to that word. And that assignment will come to fruition. It has to. It is the law of God. For it to come to fruition. And if you have spoken life, it will bring life. If you have spoken death, it will bring death. Period. So if you've decided to open your mouth, understand there is great responsibility in opening your mouth to bring life or bring death. What a, what a responsibility we have when we choose to open up our mouths. It's like I, it really rings true why we have two ears and one mouth. Because I can tell you, there was a time that you would have thought I had three mouths. Because there was no way that I was going to shut up. And there was, I was going to let you know real quick <laughs> what I thought and how I felt and how that needs to change you. Because <laughs> <laughs> I was perfect. <laughs> I was divine. <laughs> <laughs> and so I let you know real quick, fast in a hurry, where you were wrong and set you on straight street. And, I, and to my not compliment, what would be the opposite of compliment, not compliment, whatever. Uh, 
I've, I can shut people down. I would shut them down in, a, in one sentence. Shut them down. I, I would shut adults down. I mean, as, as a teenager, they would come in and they'd blah, 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 tell me all the things that I need to do and why. And I'd be like, well, you know, whoop, 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 whoop. And they'd be like, I don't know what to say. Number one, I can't believe that you just said that. Number two, nobody's ever spoken to me that way. And number three, I, I got nothing. <laughs> just shut them down. Because I chose not to repeat what I heard the Father say. And I know in no way, form, or fashion did that bring all honor and glory to the only wise God. We must move into a place that with our spirituality, with our thoughts, and with our physical bodies, that we are bringing all glory to the only wise God. So lastly, we can't help but to compare ourselves to Paul. Paul said he's the least of all Christians. That everything that he ever studied and ever learned, that it was poop. It's worth nothing. Worthless. Stinks. So we think about Paul and his trials. And this is what he endured. Five times he was beaten with 39 stripes from a whip. He was beaten with rods. He was stoned. Three times he was shipwrecked. He had perils of water, perils of robbers. He was hungry. He was thirsty. He was cold. He was naked. He was punched. He was left for dead. He had attempts on his life. Attempted imprisonment. In some cases he was actually imprisoned. And he was betrayed by his own people. And yet, at the end of this chapter, he looks at the young man who's writing this for him, and he says, make sure you say, all glory to the only wise God. Amen. And I think about that, is that we are not guaranteed in any way to not have trials and tribulations. It's also been said that the greatest fear is that we will become more powerful than we could possibly imagine. And we won't know what to do with it when we get it. We could have prosperity in our hands and take it and claim it all for ourselves. So in all of these situations, it comes down is, is can you endure all of these things, all of the hardships and trials that you're walking through and still look up and go, all glory to the only wise God. Can you find yourself and walk over here in your daily life and find yourself in the midst of a storm and a hurricane and trials and tribulations and torment and oppression and still find yourself and find a way to look beyond and look through it all and say all glory to the only wise God. But then as you walk through the storm and as you walk through the hurricanes and as you walk through the oppression and you move into a place of prosperity and you find yourself on the other side of it, can you still bow low in the midst of that and not take any acknowledgement or any credit for yourself and say, all glory to the only wise God. I think about in my own life because I don't know what you've gone through. I know that I've heard some stories and I'm, I, I applaud you that you're still here. I applaud you that you still serve God. I applaud you that you still go to church and follow the things of Christ. I applaud you for that. But I think about the trials and tribulation in my own life. And there's been so many times in the midst of them, I couldn't go up and I couldn't see beyond my hurt. I couldn't see beyond my pain. I couldn't see beyond the situation that would have presented itself. And I know that I need to look beyond that and say all glory to the only wise God because I know that in somehow, that in His great wisdom, He's preparing for me for something that I don't know about. Because His ways are higher than my ways. And His thoughts are higher than my thoughts. So I don't know what it is and what reason that I have to walk through the storm and walk through this valley of the shadow of death and walk through all these oppression and turmoil and torment and torture and beatings. Except that maybe I need to learn how to give all glory unto the only wise God. And maybe if I find myself imprisoned and locked up physically or spiritually, then maybe I just need to have a worship session like Paul and Silas did so that the 
earthquake takes place, but so much so that I'm not worried about getting out. Because as long as I'm where the manifested presence of God is, then I can give all glory to the only wise God. But then I can find myself where I'm on the other side and I'm receiving all the blessings and favor and they're showering down upon me and the rainbow of life has lifted itself up. And I can still say every day, in every minute, in every thought, in every part of my spirit, in every action and word that I have, all glory to the only wise God. Amen. We find ourselves waking up with that lump in the back of our throat going, Oh God, I know what i got to face today. And I know what they're going to say about me. And I know the reports and all that stuff. And I know what's being asked of me today. And I know who's going to act up and why they're going to act up. And who i got to drop off today. And how they're going to give me heck in the car. And they're going to run it through. And they're going to fight. And they're going to do whatever and scream at each other. And this one's not doing this one. And they're not getting to sit in the right seat that they're supposed to be sitting in. And they're unfair. And the last one took the last juice. And I don't understand why. I can't play on this tablet or this tablet or whatever iPod or thing that they have out there. I don't understand why I can't do that. I don't understand why it seems like I'm not getting any promotions when everybody around me is getting all the promotions and I don't see why they're allowed to talk to me and I've got all of these things going on, all of these turmoil, all of these judgments against me in every way and I don't know what to do and it's so hard and it's pushing down on me and everything is just harder and harder every day. It's so to the point where it's even hard to breathe and swallow. I don't even know what to do. I don't even want to get up out of bed and it's just pushing down on me and it's pushing down on me and it's pushing down on me. But can I see beyond and still say all glory to the only wise God? Can I have the strength? Will the strength muster up inside of me to think on the things that are lovely and on, are pure and are of a good rapport and find the virtue and find the things that are praiseworthy? Can my mind be stayed on him and him give me peace in the midst of this situation? Can I still bow down and look beyond the situation and the circumstances and the scenarios and the hardship and the torture and the pain and say all oh, glory? To the only wise God. All glory to the only wise God who must have some kind of strategy in the midst of this. Some kind of wisdom to prepare me to bear a burden of such great importance that I'm having to walk through all of this to do. A burden that only I can carry. A burden that only I was meant for. Fastened for me. Made by the King of Kings. But I've just got to walk through this time right now. And as long as my heart attitude and my mind attitude can stay right and say all glory to the only wise God. But then I move through it. <sighs> and I get on the other side. And I've got a limo waiting outside. And I'm on the way to my private jet. I have to stop off at the spa <laughs> to get a back rub and a head rub and my, my mani and petty <laughs> and get my facial and get all the things I need and my food brought to me and cooked and prepared. And in my limo on my way to my private jet on the way to my private island. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> it's real easy to sit back in that nice, comfortable, long stretch limo with the right temperature and your Voss water. <laughs> Say, well, Michael, you've done pretty good. But immediately you find yourself again looking beyond the scenario that is in front of you. And maybe in the midst of that limo, just bowing low and saying all glory to the only wise God. Maybe rolling down those windows and shouting it out, all glory to the only wise God. So that there is no doubt in your flesh that likes to take credit for every good thing. That the glory belongs to the Most High God. And that it was created only for Him. It was created only to return back to Him. The prosperity was only there so that it could go back to Him. Because He's the only one worthy to receive it. He's the only one worthy to share 
shout my praise to. He's the only one worthy and wise enough and praiseworthy enough and magnificent enough for me to give my glory to. It's only due him. It's only worth anything to him. It's only of value to him. Anywhere else, it's worth nothing. But to him, it's all glory to the only wise God. And so can we rumble around in our thoughts and we want to grumble and gripe or complain or when we find ourselves wanting to take credit for every good thing, can we just begin to repeat over and over to ourselves and to our spirits until it moves into our heart, until it moves into our mind, until it moves into our soul, until it takes over our flesh? Can we just say all glory to the only wise God? All glory to the only wise God as stripes are being moved on my back and as the whip is hitting me and as the devil is beating me down and the enemy it seems is encamped all around me and oppressing me every way and as I'm feeling it hit my back and I'm feeling the torture of the enemy being allowed upon me can I say all glory to the only wise God and I find myself all locked up in an uncomfortable dark dungeon can I begin my praise and worship session right then because I see beyond my situation and circumstance and I know that God can manifest his presence anywhere he chooses he just needs the right heart attitude to do so and can I sit there in the midst of that and have a manifest presence of God because I can tell you heaven can exist anywhere you are and you can experience heaven in the midst of your trial you can experience heaven in the midst of your tribulation we can experience heaven in the midst of our prosperity and in the midst of our blessing and in the midst of our favor because I have tasted of the manifested presence of God. And it is worth more than any private jet, private airline, any gold, any facial or spa treatment that I've ever had or ever could have. All I want is the manifested presence of God. All I want is to taste heaven. All I want is for him to touch me in every way, form, and fashion and to move through my body. And whatever it is that I can do here on this earth, if it's simply by repeating over and over again, all glory to the only wise God, that is what I will do. Because I don't want it. I don't want fortune and fame. I, don't, I want whatever it takes to get the manifested presence of God in my life and active around me at every moment, in every circumstances, every minute, of every hour, of every day, of every week week of every month of every year God manifest your presence around me oh God oh glory oh glory oh glory oh glory to the only wise God oh glory to the only wise God so that yet again I can experience the manifested presence of God because the, the prosperity is worth nothing if I don't have the presence of God I can't endure the hardship and pain if I don't have the manifested presence of God I can't walk through this life God, God wants me to walk through fulfilling the purpose that he has on my life if I cannot experience the manifested presence of God and I realize that I'm useless if I don't have the manifested presence of God and so I say all glory to the only wise God all glory to the only wise God all glory to the only wise God till I get an understanding that moves me out of the place where I'm at where I don't begin to see the situations I heard it said one time to the degree that it is large for you and a hardship for you is to the degree it is nothing to God how big it is to you is how little it is to God and all it requires us is to look up to the hills from whence come our help and say all glory to the only wise God. Because there's something about repeating that that moves us outside of our situation and circumstances. It calls and activates the supernatural in our lives in a way that we could not possibly fathom or understand. It moves us into a place to look at things and see things differently because we see them as the Father sees them. Not as the world sees them. We begin to judge them as the Father judges them. And not as the world sees them. And I see my trials and tribulation as a preparation for prosperity. That he, he knows I can't handle it. it. would kill me right now. So I have to say all glory to the only wise God. Because I don't have a limo right now. And I don't have a private jet. And I don't have a private island. So I have to say all glory to the only wise God. And when I get it. I'm going to say all glory to the only wise God, and we'll all go. <laughs> we'll have epic islands. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. 
Amen? Amen. Can you say that with me? All glory to the only wise God. Say it again. All glory to the only wise God. Stand up and say it one more time. All glory to the only wise God. There is a praise that is inside of us that is only worthy to be given back to him. It cannot be squandered on this earth for earthly things in any way. It has to be given back to him. It is due him in every way. I would have you, your lives be changed. I would have you move into a place of prosperity and blessing and, or trials and tribulation. But no matter what, you're giving all glory to the only wise God, as Paul did here. Amen? Amen. We just want to make sure that this, this area up front is available for anyone who would have prayer in any way, form, or fashion. If you would like to get saved, if you would like to get baptized in the Holy Spirit, if you need prayer for healing or deliverance, we believe God heals and can deliver you right now. I mean, he can send somebody out and Naaman could dump in the river seven times and be healed. Yeah. We believe that God still heals. We believe that miracle days are still here and still active. And that God, and we can pray that prayer over you. If you need the prayer of agreement, you just need your mind to be transformed and renewed into a place to where you can declare all glory to the only wise God with your thoughts, with your spirituality, with your physical body. We are here to pray that prayer with you this morning. If those of you feel released... Go out and change somebody's life this week. I hope it encouraged you, and I hope that you declare this week all glory to the only wise God. Amen? Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Go out and change somebody's life. I love you guys. Hallelujah.